Okay, I think we're good. All right, so again, we're looking at uh, chapter 4.7, 4.8, right, in our textbook, even though you know I love my worksheets. So here we're looking at a little mixed practice, and I'm trying to show you some real-world application as well. All right, so we have a class of 20, eight boys, 12 girls. We have four students who we are choosing at random to attend a special event. So first question, in how many ways can the students be chosen? So here we're really looking at the grand total. How many kids do we have in class? We have 20. And we're looking at all the different ways that we can get groups of four of them. So 20 choose four, 20 C four. Okay, again, this is saying all possible groups of four. Okay, so here I do expect that you know how to do it both ways, longhand, shorthand. I'm going to show you the calculator first. All right, so in the calculator, I'm just typing in 20 and then math over to probability, right? It's my third choice right here, and then four. So 20, choose four, and I hit enter, and I get 4,845. slide that up. Okay, next example. In how many ways can the students be chosen if only girls are selected? All right, so we're only picking from among the ladies and we have 12 total girls. So it's saying, right, how many groupings could we get, but we're only picking from among the girls. So from among the 12 girls, we're looking at all the different options of groups of four. So 12 choose four. I think this is a good one for us to practice longhand because it's smaller numbers. All right, so let's practice this one longhand. So we know that we start with the 12 factorial on top and then 12 minus four factorial on the bottom like that. If I left it like this, it would be just a straight permutation. But in permutations, order matters, right? We're assigning people to a specific place or position. But since order doesn't matter with a combination, we're looking at general groups of people, items, things, we need to divide out our duplicates. So I divide out four factorial as well, and that represents my duplicate groups of four. So if I have um, four girls, A, B, C, D, it's the same group as D, C, B, A, for example. So I'm dividing out all of those duplicate groups of size four. So I end up with 12 factorial over four factorial times eight factorial. So if I do this longhand, Right, I have 12 times 9, or if I went to 9, 12 times 11, my brain is going too fast. 12, 11, and then 10, and then 9, and then the 8 factorial, like that. Okay, and then on the bottom, I have 4 factorial, so that's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and then the 8 factorial, again, just like that. So the eight factorials, those knock away because that's a one to one ratio, just like that. And then when I look at what else I can cancel away, I see a four times three on the bottom and that's just 12. So 12 to 12 is one to one also. And I still have that two on that bottom. So 10 and two will reduce to five and one just like that. So now I just have to multiply out 11 times 5 times 9. 11 times 5 times 9, and that gets me 495. Okay, but let me just double check that with my calculator. 
So here I'm looking at 12 math over to probability. And I'm choosing four. And I just want to make sure that we're matching and we're all good. So again, it's important to me that you know how to do it longhand. You understand the mechanics of the skill and you also know how to do it shorthand as well. Calculator keystrokes. All right, how are we doing so far? You guys have any questions for me? We're doing okay? Okay. All right, for C, in how many ways can the students be chosen if one boy and three girls are selected? So one boy and three girls, and we're asked for how many ways is this possible? So I need to look at my pool of boys and my pool of girls. So for the boys, we have eight boys in the class and we're looking at all the ways that we could choose exactly one. And from the pool of 12 girls, we're looking at all the different groups of three of them. Now, a lovely shortcut when we're choosing one of something, whenever I see N choose one, it's always going to be whatever N is, right? If I have eight boys and I'm looking at all the ways that I can pick just one of them, there's eight ways that can play out. So a little shortcut here that ends up being just eight. So I'm typing in eight times 12 choose three. Let me put my calculator down and show you the shortcuts. So eight times 12 math over to probability, choose three. So eight times 12, choose three. And we end up with 1,760. Armand, how's the sound? Everything doing okay? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. I just okay, got good. in. Okay, just wanted to double check. All right, for D, in how many ways can the students be chosen if at least one boy is selected? Okay, we're still in ways. This is not a probability question. If it was a probability question, I would go through the complement, absolutely, but it's not asking me that. It's saying, how many ways can this play out? So at least one boy, first, let me just flesh that out. We're picking four total students. So let me remind you of that first. So four total students. And if I'm saying at least one is a boy, it could be one, two, three, or all four are boys. So let me write that out, right? It could be one boy, or it could be two boys, or it could be three boys, or all four are boys. But what I have to remember though, is if I'm picking one boy, it's gonna come with three girls because there's four total students. So one boy and three girls, two boys will pair with two girls, three boys and one girl, four boys and zero girls. So we're saying, okay, these are all the scenarios that could shake out here. So I need to solve for each of these and then add them together. Now I've already done it for one of them. So if I go here, the one boy, three girls, it's actually what I just solved for here. Let me just write it out longhand. Eight choose one times 12 choose three, right? We just solved for that in part C. We know that that ends up being 1,760. And that eight choose one is really just eight. So now if I need my, my two boys, two girls, out of the eight boys, we're choosing two. And out of the 12 girls, we're choosing two. I'm gonna crunch it in the end. So I'm just gonna write it out first. Three boys, one girl. So out of the eight boys, we're choosing three. Out of the 12 girls, we're choosing one. So I have eight choose three times 12 choose one. And again, I can save myself some time. 
if I note that the 12 choose one ends up being just 12. All right, and then the last one, four boys, zero girls, out of the eight boys, we're choosing four, and out of the 12 girls, we're choosing zero of them. So this is like the, uh, the plain turkey sandwich example, right? If I'm choosing none of something, there's one way that that can play out. So n choose zero is just one, right? It's just one. All right, so now I need to just go ahead and multiply the eight choose two by the 12 choose two. All right, so eight math over to probability combination. So eight choose two times 12 math probability, third choice, 12 choose two. Okay, so that works out to be 1,848. Okay, over here, if I do the next one. Okay, I showed you guys this the other day, but let me remind you. If I just want to edit what I did previously, I can hit second enter. So enter is right down here. So if I hit second enter, it's gonna retrieve what I previously typed in and I can just edit it. So I can say, well, I want eight choose three and 12 choose one like that. And that just gets me there faster. So 672. Hey, Ms. Crystal. What's up, Rune? Um, I'm going to run out of data in like 10 minutes, maybe. Okay, okay. I will make a video room. Um, I'm recording now, so you'll see this in the video. So you can watch okay. it later. Um, I've already posted the video from second period. I just started when the internet went out. So this one will be at least the full lecture. And I'll post so it what, as soon as we're done. What Sound should good? we do? I don't know what I can tell you to do. I mean, I would say stay on with me and let's hope that the internet comes back. I can see if the school has emailed. Hold on. Okay. Let me see if the school has emailed anything. Hold on. I prefer to keep some data for the rest of the month. No, I absolutely understand. We just don't have a policy on this. Let's see. Yeah, I, I don't know. It says um, they're now rooting through Drake High School temporarily, at least, you know, New Drake. Um, we are trying to limit any unnecessary traffic for this afternoon. Don't stream music or radio, avoid any unnecessary video calls. Okay. Um, so it sounds like it should be working from school. Do you want to have Kelly try to get on again just from the computer so that you don't sure. have to use yours? Okay, let's try that again. All right, I'm gonna keep going. All right, so now I need eight choose four. So again, I can retrieve it and then I can edit it. So I'm doing eight choose four, which is 70. Okay, so I'm really adding up all of these numbers. So I'm looking at the first scenario, one boy, three girls, that next one, two boys, two girls, that next one, three boys, one girl, and then the last one, uh, four boys, no girls. So here, if I add all those up, I get 4,350 ways. All right, so now I'm getting into probabilities. So here in E, right now I'm saying, well, what is the probability that this scenario up here in C, what's the likelihood that this plays out? So whenever it becomes a probability question, you know I love my structure. So I'm gonna draw out my fraction bar, right? My, my quotient. And I'm looking at boys and girls over the total. So if I'm looking at boys, right? I know I've already calculated this. I'm just gonna make sure we see the structure. Out of the eight boys, we're choosing one. And out of the 12 girls, we're choosing three. And again, we already solved for that. That's 1,760. We solved for that in part C. Okay, and then the total, we're looking at, well, what are all of the total possible groupings of four from my big pool of students? 
And since we have 20 total students, we're looking at all the different groupings of size four. We also solve for this up in part A. So here I'm gonna divide by 4,845. So again, we're just building off of two things that we had already solved for initially. Let me slide up a little bit. So now if I crunch that, so I can reduce it, 1,760 divided by 4,845. So here we go. And then math frac and we get 352 out of 969. So that would be the reduced fraction. And if you wanna leave that as a decimal, no problem, 0.3633. All right, are we doing okay to hear? Rune, what's your status? Were we able to try to try Kelly's Zoom, see if she could get in? Yes, no, maybe so. We're good. You're good. Okay, good, perfect, perfect. All right, so then lastly, what's the probability that there will be at least one boy? So here, at least one boy, right? It could be one, two, three, or four boys. Well, I already had you solve for that, right? We solve for the, the numerator of that up in part D. So we know that one, two, three, or four would be 4,350. See on the bottom, all the different ways we can get groupings of four students from a pool of 20, we solve for that too, 4,845. So if I reduce that down, 4,350 divided by 4,845, Right, there's my decimal, but let me reduce the fraction and I get 290 out of 323. But I really want to remind you of the shortcut, right? Because we know there's an easier way. Let me just write down the decimal approximation right there. So 0.8978. So this was easy because we did that legwork in previous steps. But if I wanted to take the shortcut, since I'm solving for a probability, I could have done one minus the probability that we had zero boys. Right, if I go through the complement and it's a probability question, that's faster, right? That's faster, that's more efficient. So here, if I have zero boys, that means that we have four girls. Let me build my structure here and just confirm that I get the same thing. So I'm looking at boys, girls, total. So out of the eight boys, we're choosing none of them. Out of the 12 girls, we're choosing all four. Okay, what's my total? Well, out of the 20 students, we're looking at all the different groupings of four. So remember that when we're choosing zero of something that can play out one way, that's like that plain turkey sandwich example that I, I did with you last week. A, 20, a 12 choose four over 20 choose four, I need to crunch that. So one minus. So here I'm gonna type in 12 math over to probability, 12 choose four, and then divide by 20 math over to probability, choose four just like that. And then I'll make it a fraction. So I see 33 over 323. Well, let's make it a common denominator. So 323 over 323, and then take away 33 over 323. And looky here, we get the same answer, but this is more efficient, right? It's more efficient to go through the complement unless you already solved it the other way, right? And a reminder that I made you do that back in D. And really the reason that I made you do that is to show you that you have options. Sometimes it just takes a little bit longer to work through it a different way. I do think this option right here, going through the complement 
is more efficient. All right, are we good to hear? Okay, so on the flip side, I have some more real world examples. So I got some license plates, we got some lottery situations, and we got poker. Okay, so, so three world, real world examples. So example two, uh, we're talking about license plates. So the state of California offers special interest license plates for autos, commercial vehicles, trailers, and motorcycles. A special interest plates may be ordered in sequential, so standard numbering, or personalized custom number letters configurations. One type of special interest license plate, the memorial plate, helps California's law enforcement fight threats of terrorism in the Golden State. A personalized memorial plates can have two to six characters, so numbers and letters. So when they say characters, it's saying all the numbers, all the letters. So for numbers, we have zero through nine as our options. So we have 10 options for numbers. And for letters can be A through Z, so 26. So if I'm saying, well, how many total characters then do we have available if it can be numbers or letters, right? We have 36. So now we're told that a personalized memorial plate can have two characters all the way up to six. So if I visualize that, right, it could be two characters, could be three, could be four, could be five, or six. So I'm just drawing out my tiles to help me visualize. All right, so now I need to think, well, if it's two characters, if it's exactly two, how many options could go here? Well, 36, because it could be a number or a letter. There could be 36 options here, and then 36 options here. So an easier way to write that is just, well, 36 squared. But it could be, could be three characters. So it could be 36 here here and here, so 36 to the third. Well, you guys see how this is working, right? So let's do the shorter way and say, oh, well, this would be 36 to the fourth, 36 to the fifth, and 36 to the sixth. It could be any of those options. This would be exactly two characters, exactly three, exactly four, exactly five, exactly six. So I need to solve for each of those instances and add them up. So add up. So the quickest way to type that in is just like this. So 36 squared plus 36 cubed plus 36 to the fourth plus 36 to the fifth, plus 36 to the sixth. It's gonna be a big old number. So when I hit enter, here we go. Let me write it before I say it so I can see exactly how big it is. All right, so we have 2,238,000,000 980 possible customized memorial plates. And that's just a specialty one. All right, are we good on example two? Okay, let's talk lotto. So we know that the lottery, we know that it is virtually impossible to win, right? That it's stacked against us but we wanna really see what are our chances truly. So in the California lottery, uh, Mega Millions is a really popular game. So whenever you go to the gas station to fill up your car, usually you see what the current jackpot is for Mega Millions. Uh, players may pick six numbers from two separate pools of numbers. They can pick five different numbers from the first pool, 
numbers one through 70 and one number from a second pool that is one through 25. So let's first picture those two pools. So pool number one and pool number two. So here we have numbers one through 70 and here one through 25. Okay, in order to win the jackpot, you have to match all six winning numbers in a drawing. What's the probability that you win the jackpot? Well, first I have to figure out how many different possibilities are there. So if I'm looking at all the different ways I can pick five numbers from this first pool and one number from the second pool, right? I first have to think, is that a, is that a permutation or a combination? So let's say, for example, I pick uh, one, two, three, four, and five. Let's take something simple, easy to visualize. Okay, isn't that the same group then as if I picked five, four, three, two, one, right? It would be the same group. So that tells me a uh, combination. So out of these 70, I'm looking at all the ways we can get groupings of size five. So 70 choose five. Okay, and then over here, that second pool, we have 25 numbers, but we're looking at all the ways that we can choose just one. So 25 choose one. So this happens and this happens. So we really need to multiply that out. But remember the, the shortcut, if we're choosing just one of something, that's gonna simplify to just 25 right there. So I really need to calculate what 70 choose five and then multiply it by 25. So let me show you that calculation. So 70 choose five and then multiply by 25. All right, let me write it before I say it. So this works out to be, Three hundred and two million five hundred seventy five thousand three hundred and fifty possible ways. Right. So this is the amount of ways that we can pick a group of five from a pool of 70 and a group of one from a pool of 25. But what the question is really saying is, well, what's the probability that you win the jackpot, that you pick the five perfect numbers here and the one perfect number here? So you have a one in 302,575,350 possibility. But to make that really make sense, I want to look at that as a decimal. I want to see that as a decimal just to know just how small my chances are of winning a whole bunch of money. So here, if I do one divided by that big old number right there, look what shows up. I see scientific notation. So it's telling me just how small it actually is. So if I write out 3.305 times 10 to the negative ninth power, Right, that E is just a placeholder for a power of 10. So we're saying, okay, 3.0305 times 10 to the negative ninth power. Well, that's the same as moving my decimal here nine spots to the left. So if I move it nine spots to the left, I'm gonna have eight zeros. So 0. 0.0000, that's four. Zero, 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 zero. There's my eight and three, three, zero, five. So looking at it as a decimal, I think that captures just how unlikely it is for you to win that jackpot prize. Almost zero, virtually zero. All right, are we good on example three? Okay. All right, last real world example is cards. So we're going back to cards. So we know that a standard deck has 52 cards in it. Uh, I can even remind you, here is our sweet deck of cards right here. So all 52. 
So we know that we have four different suits, right? We have our clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. And for each suit, we have 13 cards. We have the ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then all those pretty faces, the jacks, the queens, and the kings. All right, so here I'm really interested in the game of poker. So I'm picturing in the game of poker, uh, we're looking at five cards. So five cards, that's your hand. So when I deal you five cards, picture that as that's your hand, right? You're holding five cards. So how many different possible five card hands are there? So if we have 52 total cards and we're looking at five card hands, we're looking at all of the different groupings of five from that big old pool of 52. Now, does order matter? No, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter if I have all of the aces and the king of hearts, right? And I reorganize that king of hearts and then all of the aces, it's the same group of five. So combination. So out of the 52 total cards, I'm looking at all the ways I can get groups of size five. These are all my hands. All right, let me crunch. So 52, choose five. Oops, make sure you can see it. So 52, choose five right there. So we get 2,598,960. So those are all of your possible poker hands, groups of five. But how many ways could a player be dealt five hearts? So now we're only interested in the hearts. So I'm looking at, well, how many total hearts do we have? Well, we have 13 total hearts. We have 13 total for any suit. So we have 13 total hearts. So what the question is saying here, well, now we're only picking from our pool of hearts and we're looking for all of our different groupings of five of them. So this would be 13, choose five. Okay, remember I can edit, so I can hit second, enter, pull up what I previously typed in, and I can just type over it. So here's 13, choose five. So 1,287. So this represents all the different groups of five hearts from within that larger pool of 13 of them. All right, so now I'm saying, well, how many ways can a player be dealt a flush? Well, what's a flush? Well, I'm telling you. A flush is when all five cards are the same suit. So what we calculated here, well, that's a flush, right? Five hearts. So we're saying it could be any of the suits. So it could be hearts, it could be diamonds, it could be clubs, it could be spades. Let me draw my spade correctly. There's my spade. All right, so it could be any of those. Well, I already know my hearts, right? I know my hearts was 13 choose five, but so would be my diamonds because I have 13 diamonds and I'm looking at all of my ways to group five diamonds and the clubs would be the same. We have 13 clubs and I'm looking at all the different ways I can group five of them. And same with my spades, 13 choose five. So really it's 1,287 four times. I could have also viewed it as four choose one because of the four suits, right? We're choosing one and then multiply it by the 13 choose five. That would be another way to get to the same answer, right? And that would just be four times what we just solved for. So we get 5,148. 
Okay, so that would be all the different ways that we can get to a flush. Okay, and then we have one last problem. All right, for D, what is the probability that a player is not dealt a flush? Well, right now I know all the ways I can get to a flush, so I want not a flush. So I need to do the complement then. One minus the probability that it is a flush. Right, that would get me to my not being a flush. So one minus, well, I just solve for all the different ways I can get to a flush. 5,148. Okay, and then I need to divide that by all of the different five card hands that are possible. And we solve for that up here in scenario A. So the denominator would be 2,598,960. So I'm looking at all my flushes out of all of my possible hands right, different groups of five cards from that big pool of 52. Okay, so here, I'm going to type that in. So one minus, and then parentheses, 5,148 divided by 2,598,960. All right, it's going to give me my decimal approximation of 0.998. And I know that it's not going to reduce, so I'm going to leave it as a decimal. And then I reduced it by hand earlier because it was just such a big number. So it reduced to be 16,627 divided by 16,660. So this would be the fraction if you reduced it down, but it's such a big number, your calculator won't do it for you. So I went ahead and I did it for you. I would take it as a decimal, absolutely not a problem. All right. Well, thank you, you guys, for bearing with me on a very odd day, for sure.